Happy Rosh Chodesh and a Freilich in Purim. It is now that time of year again where we get to dress up in costumes, send each other gifts, and sing some amazing songs. One of our favorite songs is Mishem, Mishem, Mishinich Nasadar, Marbim, Marbim, Marbim Besimcha. When Adar comes, we increase our joy. But if we think about it, this famous Purim statement made by the Talmud is actually quite mysterious. Why is Purim the only holiday where the, we get the month involved? We don't say by Pesach, say when Nisan comes, we increase our freedom, or by Hanukkah, when Kislev comes, we increase our light. No, it's about the holiday, not about the month. Why is Adar singled out that we equate it, the Simcha of Purim, to the entire month? So I'd like to tell you a story. When I was in graduate school for music education, they placed me in an, in an elementary school. And like in any classroom of third graders that they put me with, there were some kids who were disruptive, who would talk in class. And I, would, I went to my host teacher about it. And I told him, um, you know, Jason is acting, uh, is acting out. And she said, yeah, yeah, isn't it amazing? He's so energetic. Every time I would talk to her about children, about the students in the class, she would put a positive spin on them. Oh, yeah, he talks a lot. You know, he really wants to impress you. And this changed the way that I related to them. Instead of telling them off in class, I would pull them aside, I would give them jobs, I would talk to them about their learning, get to know them as people, give them an outlet for their energies. And what do you know, this made the class just run more smoothly. They became more involved, more participatory, started listening more, because I shifted my perspective on them. When you shift your perspective on something, the entire situation changes. When you see something from a new angle, you see things that you thought were problems, you see them as tools. You see them as ways to make your situation better. What did Haman do? Haman threw lots and he said, oh, Adar is the best time to destroy the Jews. That's what came up in the lottery. Why is it the best time? Because that's the month when Moshe Rabbeinu died, our great leader, the greatest Jewish leader, that's when he died. Now Haman was a man of very narrow focus because if he had a wider focus, he could have seen that this was actually the worst month to destroy the Jews because Moshe Rabbeinu was born during the month of Adar. Moshe Rabbeinu, our greatest leader, the conduit through whom Hashem gave the Torah, was born. Why would anyone want to destroy the Jews during that month? But he couldn't see that. Keep in mind, this was the same Haman who had such a narrow focus that he, it flustered him so much, it made him so angry, that one Jew out of a million weren't bound to him. Because of Haman's narrow focus, his downfall was ultimately assured. So that's what we do on Purim. We widen our focus. We take a look at our situations in life and we shift our angles. And we say, this is all a matter of our perception. Let me try to see it from a different way. That's why on Purim, the joy isn't just limited to Purim. Because when you shift your perspective on something, it bleeds out into everything. When you change your perspective, that affects you, your entire life, your situation, and your entire community. So on Purim, when we shift our perspective, the joy, the simcha, bleeds out into the entire month of Adar. That's why it's not just Purim, it's not just localized, because when Haman goes low, when Haman goes narrow, we go wide. We shift our perspective to a wider perspective. We see things, and we're able to find the best in our situations. And the entire month of Adar, not just Purim, becomes filled with simcha. Happy Purim and a happy Rosh Chodesh. And may our, all of our holidays and the entire month of Adar be filled with an incredible joy.